We've seen that nothing an individual does, is disposed to do, thinks or says, is by itself sufficient to determine which rule they are following in applying a concept. What conclusions are we to draw? That there's no such thing as following a rule? That there's no such thing as a concept having a determinate meaning? On one interpretation of the rule-following argument, generally attributed to Ludwig Wittgenstein, the only way to avoid conclusions like these is to recognise that rule-following is a social enterprise. If language is shared, and I don't get to make up what my words mean, then there will be more constraints on what I can mean than if it's just left up to me. If I'm inclined to apply my koala concept to possums on a dark night, you may and are likely to correct me. Of course, you could be mistaken too, and so someone else may have to be called in. They could be mistaken too, of course, but could we all be mistaken? Could koalas really be shmoalas, even though it seems to all of us that they are not? If we were all wrong, then there would have to be a standard of correctness beyond all the facts about us and our linguistic practice. What could such a standard consist in? For someone like Wittgenstein, that idea is ludicrous. It would be impossible to have any evidence one way or the other about such an external standard. So we had better settle for the idea that there is a social criterion for determining which rule we're following, beyond which questions about which rule we're following cannot meaningfully be asked. It follows on this view that mistakes can only be identified relative to the accepted community of practice. There's no possibility of a global mistake, one which we could all be making. But why should that be so? Couldn't it turn out that we are collectively wrong about which rule we're following? Before we discovered the difference between jadeite and nephrite, we called both kinds of stone jade. We thought our concept of jade picked out one kind of stuff when it really picked out a disjunction of kinds? Or couldn't most of the community get it wrong with only one or two experts knowing what's what? More generally, how is it that the way in which some individuals apply a rule occupies a privileged place in determining which rule the rest of us are following? It might be that there is no single answer to questions like this. The way in which meaning gets negotiated in a community is a complex and non-uniform process. Sometimes we discover what we really meant all along but didn't realise it. Perhaps this is true for terms that have a fair amount of currency in the language before we learn what it is we're talking about. Perhaps our concept of the gene has a history like this. Sometimes we get to settle what we meant all along. Perhaps this is what happened with the concept jade. Sometimes there is no one settled practice or set of facts to give a term a determinate meaning. Perhaps this is why some concepts, like the concept of a game, as Wittgenstein pointed out, represent family resemblances, rather than any one definitive type of thing. There are likely in the future to be as many as yet unthought of activities to which we apply the term game. Understanding how it is that we think and talk about the world and what it is to apply rules and be bound by standards of correctness remains one of the most complex and difficult, but also one of the most important and intriguing areas of philosophical analysis. However contested the space of meaning is, for better or worse, it's a shared space. Meaning may define our cognitive relationship to the world, but it is a relationship essentially mediated by others.